Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, I'm gonna show you how we can update the state of an array using React. All right, everybody, here's how we can update the state of an array using React. Be sure to import the useState hook from React. We'll begin by creating a constant, use array destructuring. The name of our array will be foods, because I'm hungry, like usual. We'll need a setter function for this state variable, set foods equals use state we will set the initial state to be an empty array. If you would like to include some initial elements, you can put that within here, such as an apple, an orange, and a banana. We'll create two functions, a function to add an element to this array, and another function to remove an element. We'll create a function to handle add food. There are no parameters. And we'll declare a function to handle remove food. We'll fill these in later. Within our return statement, let's wrap everything within a div element. I will create an h2 heading that says list of food. We'll create an unordered list with a pair of ul tags. Within my unordered list, we will embed some JavaScript code. Let's take our array of foods, use the built-in map method. The map method will return a new array. What would we like to do with all of these elements of our array? Well, we're provided with an element, which we will name as food, and an index. These are the parameters that we'll receive automatically. We'll write an arrow function to do something. I will create a list item element. We have three already because our array initially has three elements, an apple, orange, and a banana. If I were to go to my console, React wants us to add a key for each list item so it can keep track of them. So with the opening list item tag, I will set the key attribute to equal our index. Within each list item, I will add the current food element. And let's see if this works. Yes, it does. Apple, orange, banana. If I were to change the initial values of this array within useState, that should be reflected. After the unordered list, we'll create an input element to enter in the names of some food. I will create an input element. The type, the type will be text because we're adding a string. I will set the ID equal to be food input. I'll add a placeholder too. I will set the placeholder attribute to be enter food name. After this input element, let's create a button. The button will have text of add food. With this button, I will set the on click event handler equal to a callback to handle add food. Let's work on the handle add food function. We need to get the value found within this input element. If I were to type coconut, then press the button, I need to get this value. But first, we'll select this input element to access it. I will create a constant of new food. New food will be a string. It's going to contain this value. I will access this element, this input element, document.getElement by ID. The ID that I'm getting is food input. I would just like the value, not the entire element. So if I were to type in coconut, press the button, new food is going to be a string of coconut. Then after pressing the button, I'm going to reset this input element so it clears like this. I can do that by copying this line of code where we access the value, set it equal to be an empty string. So if I were to type in something, it should reset after hitting the button, which it does. Let's try a mango. And that resets too. So we have the string that contains our new food. We'll use our setter to update our array. If I were to pass in a new array, then add new food, this is what happens. I will attempt to add a coconut, add food. Our initial values of apple, orange, and banana, they're all gone. We've replaced the initial array with a new one that contains only one string element. 
our new food that we're trying to add, we need to copy over the previous elements of this initial state. Within this new array, when setting the state, we will use the spread operator and access our array of foods. The spread operator, when used on an array, will spread all of these elements into separate values. It'll look something like this. We're replacing the initial state of this array with a new one, so we need to copy the old elements over. So this does work, I will attempt to add a coconut and a mango. However, it would be best practice if we were to use an updater function. We don't want to directly work with the current state of a state variable, rather the previous state. I will upgrade the statement into an updater function. We will take foods arrow do this. You don't want to use the same name as the current state variable. A common naming convention is to take the first letter of your state variable and use that as a parameter. Foods will become F for the previous state. We will use the spread operator on the previous state of foods. And that should work. We have an apple, orange, banana. We can add a coconut or a mango. Now we're going to complete the handle remove food function. There's one or two things I need to change. Make sure we use camel case naming convention. I accidentally made the R lowercase. There's going to be one parameter, an index number, because we'll be working with the index numbers of these list item elements. Within our unordered list, we'll be working with the opening list item tag. Just for readability, I'm going to put this on a new line. Like so. Within the opening list item tag, we will set the on click event handler equal to a callback, a callback to the handle remove food function. This function needs a parameter. In order for us to pass in a parameter to the handle remove food callback, we need to convert this to an arrow function. We'll create an arrow with no parameters, arrow do this. Within the map method, we're provided with an index number we'll be passing in that index number to this function so we can work with it. Within the handle remove food function, we will use the setter for our foods. Within the setter, we'll use the filter method. We will take our foods, use the built-in filter method of arrays. With the filter method of an array, we are provided with an element and an index number for that element. However, we do have a naming conflict We've already stated that the parameter of this function is going to be index. Just to differentiate it, I'm going to rename index as i. So within the filter function, we will use an arrow function to do something. We're going to filter all elements where the current index represented as i does not equal the index that we receive. So if you take a look, our element parameter is provided to us, but we're not using it. You can see that it's kind of grayed out. We're going to replace this with an underscore. Using an underscore for a parameter is a convention to indicate that the parameter being passed to the function is ignored. So with parameters, if you see an underscore, that means ignore it. All right, and this should work. I will add a coconut, a mango. Then I can click on one of these list items to remove it. Let's remove our banana, our apple, and the mango. All right, everybody, so that is how we can update the state of arrays using React.